It's not five o'clock, and they don't care. Welcome to Wine to Five. Entertainment, education, and everyday drinking for everyday people. Your hosts are Valerie Caruso and Stephanie Davis, two wine educators who don't need a clock to know when to pour that next glass. Can we just start by welcoming the lovely Steph back to the U.S. of freaking A. Steph, I am so glad to be back behind the mic again with you. Cheers, sister. Cheers, Val. Woo. I am so glad to be back, Quick. too. Let me have a little drinky here. <laughs> mm-hmm. Glad to be yep. back in the U.S. of A and excited to be podcasting right now with you. This is how we do it. And what an extraordinary trip I had. And I will share all of that with you, but that's next episode, okay? That's right, everybody. You've got to wait till next week to get the 411 on Steph's three weeks around Europe and all the trouble she got into. Did you end up on YouTube, hon? I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> it is possible. I was dressed as the wine heroine, you know. Oh, my God. Yes, I did see those pictures. That was hilarious. And I I know our listeners are excited to hear about the Bordeaux Marathon and all that kind of good stuff. So, yeah, I'm sure everybody wants to hear about it. But we have so much to get to today. I understand you took a three day like a detox. Well, yeah, because I really overdid it. And thank God that I had some self-control over the last three days. Didn't have any alcohol. I was kind of like on a fish vegetable detox lots of water lots of herbal tea yeah you know the you know the the way this goes val oh totally yeah so uh justin thought i was a little bit crazy he was having bloody mary's watching the steelers game yesterday and i was not see that was really it's really good self-control but so today i am finally back to enjoying some wine and in my glass is a 2011 Grignolino di Asti from Cascina Tavin, I think is how you say the last word. I forvoed it, and it says it's not in forvo. So wonderful. Yes. And it is non filtered, and we really like those kind of wines. Oh, we do. But yeah, so this is a new wine for me, and Grignolino is the actual red grape variety name. It's an indigenous grape from Piedmont, and specifically from Asti. That's what it means when it says di Asti. And it's pale, super pale. Even though this is older, you can tell it's it's got some age on it. But these are light red wines with kind of bitter cherry aromatics, and um, I just bought this here in town it's $19 and I opened it and I'm off my detox just for international podcast day and because you know it's time to be with Val my drinking buddy I know I know I'm so glad you're back it's fall it's International Podcast Day. By the time you guys hear this, it'll be Thursday. The international podcast thing that we're going to talk about, International Podcast Day festivities will kick off Friday. So this will give you time to kind of get oriented and get ready if you want to celebrate along with us. But I'm uh, in celebration drinking. Well, I'm drinking what's open. Well, that's hey, that's how you do it. You know, I mean, I was like kind of going back and forth. I was like, oh, do I really want whiskey? It's a cool fall day. I'm working on my papers and my research. And, you know, it's Monday. And if you're like me, you open Twitter, you want to go right to the whiskey anyway. (laughs) So I decided that I had this Barolo open. It's a repeat. It's nothing new, but it's still fabulous. And it's still drinking amazing. It's the 2011 Mauro Molino Brico Luciani, which is a vineyard site. I just drank it, what, 12 episodes ago. But it's open again because I made homemade marinara sauce and meatballs last night with tomatoes from our garden girl and i just thought you know what life is short drink borolo <laughs> i know that's right well you know that's really nice i mean i i agree and you know this fall weather makes you kind of turn to the red wines or whiskey but yeah. um but you know that's it's nice you should be drinking borolo whenever you can every opportunity <laughs> 
Well, it was the first dinner I got to have with John in over two weeks, too, because he's been gone. Yeah. So I'm like, that's it. Homemade from the garden sauce. And we ended up having dinner way too late last night. But it's like, I don't care. We're, we're drinking Barolo. I know it's nine o'clock at night, but it's the way it's going to be. <laughs> but let's get into our discussion because I think this is a record five minutes in. Five <laughs> minutes in and we're done with drinks already. I have never seen that happen on this show before. But bam, bam is right, girl. And we're going to talk about International Podcast Day. And I hope the listeners aren't going like, what? But click because trust us, it's going to be fun. It's going to be a lot of fun. So we have a quick audio clip for you. It's only like 30 seconds to tell you a little bit about International Podcast Day. International Podcast Day is September 30th, and you can help spread the word. You may be asking, what can I do to get involved? It's pretty simple. Head over to internationalpodcastday.com and check the suggestions. Then use hashtag International Podcast Day to join the conversation. You can reach out and connect with other podcasters, listeners, and your favorite podcast hosts. Remember September 30th, International Podcast Day, a day-long celebration of the power of podcasts. And if you want to click and listen along like we know some of you do, you can go to internationalpodcastday.com and you can just kind of poke around and check out the itinerary because this is actually a celebration. We thought it was a big deal last year. And I know I carried my iPad around all day because it was on a Friday, I believe. And, and I had my wine and I was sitting on the front porch with my iPad clicking into the round tables and all that. This year, this thing has grown to a 30-hour event. Dude. It's, it's like a 30-hour happy hour. And we would have our t-shirts if they were here yet. Oh, they're not going to be here in time, unfortunately. But, you know, and I wish we could do it together. But honestly, you know, I don't think anybody plans on spending the whole 30 hours in front of their computer. I certainly don't. But what I will tell you guys is that we are celebrating throughout the weekend. So you can check in as you want to if there's something that interests you. Because, you know, we are celebrating podcasting. And as you know, it is a way to connect people. For podcast day, that's a way to connect other podcasters. We all love what we do, but we, we also like to share the shows that we love too. And this is where we've met other podcasters and found other shows that we've shared with you. So it's kind of a self-licking ice cream cone of love, if you will. Well, and we know that all of you are listening to our podcast. So it's like, you're already into podcasts. We know that. So if we can help you discover new podcasts... We think that's kind of like, you know, cherry on top sort of thing. That's right. It is. It's the cherry on top of that ice cream, self-licking <laughs> ice cream cone. <laughs> you will. But it's about coming together and sharing appreciation for the voices heard through the podcast, the voices you love, the voices sharing great content and bringing all kinds of communities of people together. Right, Steph? Yes. And I know all about that because our podcast has brought a lot of people together worldwide and it just kind of keeps the world going around. I think if it wasn't for podcasting, we wouldn't know all of these people from all over the world who interact with us, whether it's in our Facebook group or who we see at conference. I mean, people come up to you and go, oh, yeah, I'm one of your listeners. And, and it's really crazy to know that just by sitting behind a microphone and telling a story or talking about a glass of wine or whatever it is you do, you know, whether it's Star Wars or Star Wars and wine, you know, things like we talked about with Jennifer last week. Cannons and Tunes. Tannins and Tunes, Broadway. So it's so funny that there's a podcast for literally everything. And you might have to weed through a few to find some you like, you know, and you, you kind of subscribe in and out. But it is a community. And that's what International Podcast Day celebrates. So we would love it if you guys, you know, whether you want to participate or not, raised a glass on Friday, September 30th to International Podcast Day with us. And one more thing about that. Did you know that you could send social media thank you notes to your favorite shows? Do it. Do it. Do it. Do it. Help us celebrate. But uh, Steph, you know, what else is going on that day? Well, it looks like there is a 30-hour ha happy hour. What? That's what we're calling it. That's not what they call it. That's what we call it because, you know, wine. <laughs> Because we're happy the whole time that it's going on, okay? So that's where we're getting this 30-hour happy hour. But it does, so it's, it kicks off on Friday, which is the 29th. And, and then it's like officially International Podcast Day on Saturday the 30th. So 
Friday starting at 4 Pacific time. That's when it kicks off. And then there'll be one hour presentation by the team. And Dave Lee, who is dear to us because we met him back at PodFest in February in Orlando. He's Him and his dad have created this whole thing. This is why it's so cool. Like, and then we feel special because we met him. But they're going to talk about the history of International Podcast Day and give us that opening day feeling like the Olympics. <laughs> Like with Giselle Bunchen and the gold dress, you know, if you watched the Olympics last year. So, yeah, Dave, if you got Giselle in a gold dress on the opening ceremonies of International Podcast Day, like, yeah. Yeah. And if like not, that. there's always next year. That's right. <laughs> Okay, so then between Friday night and Saturday night, there are going to be speakers from all over the world, Thailand, Australia, Zimbabwe, China, Ireland, U.S. of A, Finland, Ghana. I mean, they're so like crazy, guys. Do you realize that podcasters are everywhere? And that's why we can all connect, too. And that's why it's cool that it's not like a conference that we all have to go physically to. It's cool that it's all online. There are subjects ranging from everything. Like we said, you can find a podcast about everything, but there's also on International Podcast Day things that relate to something that you will enjoy. There's social topics regarding breaking the glass ceiling and things about being heard and, you know, all sorts of cool stuff about what's happening in, in your own society, that kind of stuff. So it's not always just about the person behind the mic, but it's a lot of times their stories relate to you. So that's why podcasting, I mean, so many people have connected with us, Val, because we talk about our stories, like we'll say we're non-breeders or something, and then people yeah. relate to us, you know, because they don't have kids either. Or we say that we had this embarrassing wine story, and then people relate with us because that's happened to them too, you know? So that's what's really cool about being a podcaster and, and having a podcasting community of listeners. Right. It's it's all about the voice, not the voice as in, wow, you have a sexy voice, but about being heard. Well, Val, ta let's talk about the People Choice Awards. Saturday night at 5 p.m. Pacific, we have the People's Choice Podcast Awards, and we have many friends up for these awards, and we're going to link up the site for you. I mean, it's real easy, podcastawards.com, and you can see who the finalists are. But some of our buddies who've actually been on the show, like the We Like Drinking guys, mm -hmm. uh, Jeff and Jeff, John, we John hasn't been on the show, but we've been mm -hmm. on their show with John. Yeah. Mark over at Whiskey Cast, Jen at Congressional Dish, she podcasts with Elsie and Jess, and Minion Fogarty at Grammar Girl, and these are just a few of the podcasts that are out there, but there are a slew of finalists and new shows that we haven't even got to get our ears on yet, and some of them look super interesting. So if anything, it's a great way to discover new podcasts because, you know, I need 70 more <laughs> podcasts in my feed than I already have because I, I have literally like 70 podcasts in my feed. Yeah, I mean, we do have to, to it requires a little bit of restraint. <laughs> it does. But, there are going to be some episodes you're like, you know, I think I'm not feeling that one today or I'll save that one for the shower or I'll save that one for laundry day or I'll save that one for a walk around the neighborhood and I think Essie and Elsie Essie and Jels, I think Jesse and Elsie, <laughs> Jess and Elsie <laughs> talked about this. Oh, have some more Barolo Bell. They talked about this, you know, where there's something that you do like washing dishes. If you need a podcast for your drive to work or if you need a podcast for, you know, housework or whatever, a jog, there's something out there. And I think that's a good place to start. Totally. Well, I, I think we have to also mention the documentary film about podcasting and everybody has access to that it's called the messengers and that is uh, a film that was created by chris kremitos mm -hmm. well val and i you know were really excited that we were able to help fund their crowdfunding efforts and we also got to watch the film when we were at PodFest, but you can watch the trailer on the website, themessengersdoc.com, and see if that's something you're interested in, and if so, you can order the film on iTunes. And what it is, it's a close look at podcasting and podcasters who tell their stories and bring meaning to their communities. I mean, I think it's if you're into documentaries like I am, I seriously, everybody's mm -hmm. always telling me like, you got to watch this. I love watching documentaries and I love watching TEDx too. But oh, anyway, yeah. 
Uh, but anyhow, so so yeah, it's totally Ted porn. I'm such a dork, <laughs> but um, so yeah, check that out. And and like we said, there are other episodes that you can go back, kind of in our library of Wine to Five podcast episodes. And if you haven't listened all the way back to you know episodes into the 30s, you will find our We Like Drinking Boys. Uh, Jeff Eccles was on the show, episode 35, and Jeff Solomon was on episode 49. We also had Susan Castrava from Wine Enthusiast Magazine on the show in episode 82. And for any of you that haven't heard, Wine Enthusiast has a great podcast as well. So we love that one. And for any uh, beer lovers, Amanda Doty from Great Beer Adventure, she was on our show in episode 101. So if that's something you want to check out, now you know. You know, I was going to say something about the uh, messengers. Yes. Doc. So those of you listening, you're, you're probably listening because you love wine. So if you've seen Psalm, then this documentary is like Psalm, but with microphones instead of wine glasses. Is that is that a fair assessment? Yes. Yes. And I think we've mentioned, you know, some of these things we've mentioned on previous shows because we get excited when we first hear about it. So it usually ends up on our wino radar. But this this is kind of, you know, how how we bring it all together once a year at at, uh, International Podcast Day and kind of uh, give you the highlights of what's going on with podcasts that we enjoy um, and some of these things to make it a little bit more about podcasting and a little bit less about wine one time a year. Right. Yeah, because we do have other interests besides wine. I know that's hard to believe, but (laughs) should we get on to the factoid? Yes, the factoid is the history of podcasting because it started about 13 years ago in 2004. And the term podcast came from combining iPod with broadcast. Right, Val? That's right. It was actually 2004. And the term podcasting was first coined after Apple's release of the iPod device. Ben Hammersley was a journalist writing about new technology in The Guardian, and the portable audio content was thereafter known as a podcast, like Steph says. And we'll actually link up that original Guardian article from 2004. Now, I have to geek out just a little bit and say that now in education, podcasting was used at the beginning of the 2000s, but they were just calling it audio recordings or whatever, but it wasn't used as podcast as we know it, or it wasn't called podcasting as we know it, but it was used in education before that because I did a whole paper on using podcasts for education. So that was 10 pages of fun. So now perfect. <laughs> I know, but back to International Podcast Day. Yes, International Podcast Day started in 2014. So essentially 10 years after podcasting started and our fun and fabulous Wine 25 podcast, for those of you who didn't know, started in 2015 and that's kind of a big deal I mean it should be like on you know the calendar you know that's a big deal but what I do want to say that is a big deal and I'm very excited to tell everybody is that Val and I are are toasting and celebrating a couple of milestones and we couldn't have done it without you guys the listeners you get all the credit we hit our biggest download month ever in August and our total downloads of all time since we first started is now over 50,000 downloads. So we're really excited, you know, uh, to have have the success that we have and we have more episodes to come and more content to create and experiences to share with you and wines to drink on the show. But thank you, thank you, thank you for helping us get here and where we are today uh, in our podcast. Yeah, cheers to that. Cheers. Cheers. Especially because it started as kind of like almost like a joke. (laughs) (laughs) You know, it was like, oh, yeah, let's start a podcast. That'll be fun. Oh, people are listening. (laughs) Oh, people are listening in other countries. (laughs) Uh Oh, people want to support this. This is cool. This is awesome. Yes. It's just been a a crazy adventure and it just happens a little bit at a time. And I think that's how this whole podcasting day thing started. You know, it starts and it's grown. Even in the last year, I've seen how it's grown. So I think that's fantastic. On to Wino Radar, I think. Yes, definitely. I have uh, a few things that wine media, actually, that I consumed during my trip 
on the plane. That's what's so great about long flights. You know, you uh-huh. can really <laughs> consume a lot of content. And one of the things uh, I just listened to was the Shift Drink podcast. Their most recent episode that was released on September 13th was about vermouth, amaro, and house alpens with Jake Parrott. And it totally reminded me, Val, of back in episodes 20 and 21 when we covered those topics. But those these guys, these three guys on uh, Shift Drink were hilarious. And they're just so crazy over the top with how much information they have and what they know. But it is an explicit episode. So be wary if that is something um, that offends you. But it is a it's a really, really good overview of Vermouth and Amaro. So highly recommend it. And I also recommend a cute romantic comedy that I watched on the plane uh, starring Diane Lane. And who doesn't like I mean, men and women, everybody loves Diane Lane. Um, This movie is called Paris Can Wait. And it takes place in France. So how funny is that, that I was just there? It's like perfect for for our listeners because it's French food, wine, more wine, and still more wine. So great movie to watch with a glass of wine, especially this time of year. But that's what's on my radar. What's on yours? Very cool. And I got, I got to say on a shift drink, those guys, I mean, they're just so much fun. And mm-hmm. yeah, the language is... But if you've met Arthur Black, I've met him a couple times. And if you've been in his seminars, that's just that's the dude. I mean, he's real. And and I had to giggle when that episode came back because we did do that episode called Bitter's Party at right. Two. And y'all hated it. Maybe they'll like it better when it's Arthur Black. I, yeah, maybe they'll like it better when Arthur Black does it. And maybe we just and now I want to go back and say, oh, my God, did we get stuff wrong? <laughs> you know, and so, yeah, they, I don't know. But y'all y'all hated that episode. Nobody wanted to listen to that. So and that's OK. That's all right. So go ahead and listen to Arthur Black, because I guarantee you he makes it way more entertaining. It is really entertaining. But on my wine radar, <laughs> besides those dudes. But the online gin joint. That sounds fun. Is on my wine. What is that? <laughs> and I did post something on Facebook because I think it's so cool. Yeah. Saturday morning, the 7th of October at 10 a.m. Central, I believe. The fabulous Ms. Jane, the bubbly professor, you remember her from our first year in podcasting. She came on the show, I believe it was a November 2015 episode. She will be doing an educational presentation on gin, complete with a taste along. And, you know, like I say, Saturday morning sipping gin with 60 to 70 of your closest online booze buddies. What is better than that? We will link up the shopping list because you got to get a couple of bottles before it starts it doesn't look like anything too obscure on that list but if you go to wine wit and wisdom swe.com that's society and wine educators blog there's a save the date on there we've also posted it on facebook we'll pop it into the blog again but guys i think i'm gonna be there I think I'm going to be in the online gin joint and I would love for you guys to join me. I would totally too, but I'm teaching a class that day. Ah, But that's okay. Uh, Tell me all about it. I think you should have a little review of it on the show. I will. I will. Especially if I get my paper done, because I think that's the last week I've got to turn in this one paper. So if I get my paper done, I will be there and I will do a review of that class for you guys. I think it'll be a blast. But moving on to shout out stuff, who you shouting out to? Well, because this is a show about podcasting, I want to give a shout out to my Justin and Val's John for encouraging us to keep this podcast going and being the pillars that we need each and every week. Thank you, boys, for your support. Yes, we totally appreciate that. They don't want to hear another word about our podcast, but they're glad we're doing it. It keeps us off the streets. So, but we're going to move on to Patreon love because we have you patrons out there who are supporting us on our Patreon page or crowdfunding platform. We have Tenacious Tasters, Jeff E. from We Like Drinking, Lynn from Savor the Harvest, Sebastian from Sassy Italy Tours, Jen in Maryland and the world, according to her Instagram feed, David and Lisa in Illinois, and then our It's Not 5 O'Clock and We Don't Care listeners, Meg in South Dakota, Clay in Arizona, John in California, Andrew and Aswani also in California. Not Andrew and Oswani together. Andrew in California <laughs> and Oswani in California. We probably need to start grouping everybody by state. I, we really do. I think so. Chantal is in Ontario, and we saw that she got her uh, vineyard fresh. 
Yes. Uh, she posted that. Mary Lou in Pennsylvania, Kathy in Georgia. I think Mary Lou posted her uh, Govino swag as well, didn't she? Yes, she did. Okay. Using it. Kathy in Georgia, she's doing all kinds of wine fun things that she's posting as well and Wine to Five challenging it up. Chris and Janet in Colorado, and they were actually in Oktoberfest with you, weren't oh, they? Oh, they were. We had a lot of fun Uh-oh. together. Oh, I'll bet you did. I can't wait to hear more about that next week, guys. Steve in Illinois, Kathy in Tennessee, Renee in Illinois, Diane in Colorado, and Ashley in North Carolina. And, you know, we did put her feature in the blog a couple episodes back before, uh, in the Marietta's Well episode before Steph left for France. She said, I wanted to let you all know, I just signed up as an It's Not Five O'Clock and We Don't Care Patreon because I love your show so much. I work at Huntersville, North Carolina, Whole Foods as a demo chef. Part of my job means sampling out lots of wine, including creative food pairings, selecting cheeses and charcuterie, etc. Listening to your show last month or so has upped my demo game so much. I've started going through the WT5 archive on Stitcher and listening to every episode in order. One especially cool thing on my wino radar, thanks to your mention of Cork Dork in one of the episodes, I bought and read it. I ended up loving it so much, I chose it for the October Book of the Month Club for the store's culinary book club, of which I am the founder slash leader. We will be discussing it on October 1st and conducting a blind tasting of our own. All of my regular customers are so excited excited about it too. Now, thanks for everything you do. And thank you, Ash, because if you're not a member of our Facebook group, you have not seen the awesome stuff that she's posting. She's hilarious. We love her. And we love all of you guys, including our Tastemaker listeners. Steph, I am like, why don't you go? Tastemaker listeners, thank you, David in Scotland, Carol in Kentucky, and our Winetastic listener Laura so go to our patreon page for details patreon.com forward slash wine t-w-o f-i-v-e podcast on how to be entered into our monthly drawing get exclusive content and swag like we mentioned govino glasses things like that so now it is time for the patreon monthly drawing all right here we go and who's this month's winner Val? Oh, it's the paper bag. I hear it. I know. It's all class up in here, let me tell you. Meg. Meg Meg Hansen! Yay! Meg Hansen gets a t-shirt. Yeah, Meg, you let us know which size you want. And we've already got your address because you're a patron. You were our first patron. She was our first patron almost a year ago i think we jumped the shark on crowdfunding exactly a year ago that's cool if i'm not mistaken so that's another thing to celebrate yeah what a great way to celebrate international podcast day and to give something special to meg so that is what um we're talking about when we say join our patreon community um and we appreciate you guys And, you know, you can also connect with us on the social spaces in between our episodes. And we encourage you to join our private Facebook page, which is where uh, Ash or Ashley, she is leaving all these cool photos and stories that she's sharing with everybody. So Wine25 Community, find that private Facebook page. And you can connect with Val on Twitter at WineGalUnboxed. And as Vino with Val on Facebook, Instagram, and Pinterest. And I am on Twitter, Pinterest, and Instagram as the wine heroine. So until next week, happy International Podcast Day. Happy International Podcast Day and cheers, everybody. Thank you for listening to the Wine to Five podcast. Be sure to check us out at Facebook slash wine T-W-O-5. And tune in next week for more fun and useful SIP tips.